Welcome fellow audio sorcerers, wizards, and gurus to my channel. I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the audio sorcerer. So this is the channel to teach you how to affect your audio recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So in today's video, we're going to continue along with my Pro Tools series, and I'm going to tell you my favorite 15 Pro Tools keyboard shortcut keys. So we're going to start at number 15, and we're going to work our way all the way down to number one. So before we get to the video, I do want to remind you that I offer mixing and mastering services. If you go to audiosorcerer.com, you can check out my samples and my rates. If you sign up for an email list, you get 10% off your order. And also, if you end up liking this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell so I don't have new videos coming out. So with that being said, let's get to this tutorial. To close the session but leave Pro Tools running, you're going to do Control shift w on a PC or Command shift w on a Mac, and that basically represents under File here, and that will be Close Session, and it shows you the shortcut key here, so let's do a little close on it. And there you go, Session is closed. To close Pro Tools, whether you have a session open or not, it's going to be Control-Q on a PC and Command-Q on a Mac. And that represents under File up here, the exit here. And you can see the keyboard shortcut right there. So let's do that. Cool. For those who don't know what Tab to Transients is, let me show you here. So this button here, when I hover over it, it says Tab to Transients. We need to make sure this is enabled and it's lit up in blue for me, which means it's enabled. So I click down here on my bass track because this is strictly for audio. If I hit the tab key on my keyboard, you're gonna see that it keeps going to each transient. So if you don't know what a transient is, um, let me kind of show you with elastic audio. So if I go to the warp button here and I have some other stuff enabled to make this do this. So don't uh, think you go into the warp button, this is gonna do what I'm doing. But uh, all these little lines in here, these are all the transients that Pro Tools read for my recording here. So if I do tab the transient, it's gonna to go to each one of these here, you see? So if you're working with a loop that you got, you know, maybe a world free loop, or if you're trying to sample a sound, you need to cut it right up to like specific areas, like downbeats of drums or whatever, the tab to transient tool, that, that's basically what this is for. So yeah, it's definitely an amazing tool to have. So for copy and paste, it's going to be the same as you would do for any other function on your computer. For a PC, it's going to be Control C for copy. On a Mac, it'll be Command C. And then on a PC for paste, it'll be Control V, V as in Victor. And then on a Mac, it will be uh, Command V. So if you have this button over here where it says AZ enabled, you're going to see it says Edit Keyboard Focus. So if you have this enabled, you don't have to use command or control. You can actually just hit the letter. So if I want to copy, I don't know, this little MIDI portion of the drum track here, I click on it and I hit C on my keyboard. Okay. And I go over to here and click there and hit V, hit paste. So if I don't have this enabled over here, I would have to actually do the control C, control V. So that's copy and paste. So the track duplicate option allows you to copy tracks. And this is great for scenarios where you might be using parallel compression. An instrument that we use parallel compression on often is the bass. So if I click on the bass here and I do Alt-Shift-D on a PC or Option-Shift-D on a Mac, it brings up the duplicate tracks window here. And I can choose what parameters I want to copy and then how many duplicates I want to make. So I will just do one here. I will hit OK. And you're going to see that we have a duplicate of our bass track here. And that's how you duplicate tracks. So for group, that's all about grouping channel attributes. So that would be like grouping volume, mute, solo, whatever. So if we want to group the drive guitar left and drive guitar right, because we want their faders to move together, we could simply click on drive guitar left, hold control, and then click on drive guitar right. So they're both highlighted, hit control G, and that opens up the uh, create group window. And of course it is command G on a Mac. And then you can give it a name. So we'll call it drive guitars. And then that's pretty much it. Hit enter and there you go. Now you have a group. So if I move these, they're moving together.
So separate, also known as split, is basically just breaking apart any of the data within the edit window here. So if I go to the base track and I click right here and I want to separate this track here, I can simply hit B on my keyboard as long as I have the AZ enabled. It'll split it there. And if I don't have this enabled, I'm actually going to do control E as an egg on a uh, PC and command E on a Mac. And that will do the same thing. So that is separating data. For zoom in and zoom out, make sure that you have your AZ selected over here also. And all you got to do for zoom in is hit T on your keyboard and it will zoom in. And then for zoom out, you got to hit R. And that's all there is to it. So duplicate is one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts inside of Pro Tools because it's great for creating loops. So often we have something that is maybe playing in the verse or the chorus um, or bridge or whatever that just needs to be looped up, like it doesn't change. So you need to have it broken apart, of course, into like a two bar, four bar, eight bar loop, whatever. So for example here, I have these synthy parts here and they're in a four bar loop. And you can kind of see up here, it's got one, two, three, four. If you're looking in between the uh, dark blue lines, that's a four bar loop. So if I highlight that and I hit Control D on a PC or Command D on a Mac, It'll duplicate it right up and it'll be in perfect proportion. And I can do as many times as I want. So that is duplicate. So for record, I have to first record and enable the track. So let me do that for the bass over here. So let me click the record button. And then let me click over here where I want to start recording. And then if you hit uh, numeric three on your keyboard, that is the number pad on the right side of your keyboard, it'll start recording. And that's all there is to it. So play and stop is actually the same keyboard shortcut. It is simply your space bar. So if I hit the space bar, I'm at the beginning of my session here. You're going to see the cursor start moving. You can see it's playing. I'll hit it again and it stops. So you basically can use the space bar to toggle back and forth between play and stop. To create a new track, all you have to do is Control shift n on a PC or Command-Shift-N on a Mac, and that is N as in Nancy. This new tracks window will pop up, and there's also a few extra keyboard shortcuts you can use within this window. So if I hold Control down on a PC or Command on a Mac, and I hit the up and down arrows, it's going to take me through all the different track types that exist here. So that's pretty cool. And if I continue to hold down Control or Command, and I use the left and right arrow keys, I can go between stereo and mono. So we'll do a mono audio track, and then all I have to do is hit create, and there's our new audio track down there. For those of you with a single monitor setup, which I actually had for most of my life, you need a good way to go between the edit and mix windows, because those are the two most important windows. So if you do control equal sign on a PC or command equal sign on a Mac, you can toggle back and forth between the two windows, just like that. So the undo option in any application, including recording, is one of the most important options because, you know, it's like, oh crap, I just deleted everything. And this allows you to get it back. So if I was actually just to kind of randomly do this and I accidentally delete it, like, oh no, my audio is gone. All you have to do is hit Control Z on a PC or Command Z on a Mac, and that is Z as in zebra, and it brings it right back. All right, for all of you guys that know me, you guys know that save is my favorite keyboard shortcut. And on a PC, it is Control S, and on a Mac, it is Command S. I actually have my left hand on my keyboard with my pinky on the control button and my pointer finger on the S constantly when I'm working, even if I'm not you know, saving anything. That's just how much I am into saving. And the reason for this is because when I was younger, I would you know, be recording for like I don't know, 45 minutes an hour, and I would forget to save something. And then, hey, my computer crashed, and I lost everything I did for the last 45 minutes to an hour. It's probably one of the worst feelings in the whole world. So for any of you guys that are new out there watching this video, make sure you are saving at least three times every minute. That's how constantly you should be saving. It's that important. So that being said, I hope you guys like this video, especially my Pro Tools users out there and anybody looking to start using Pro Tools. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe because I'll be making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know I have new videos coming out. 
So until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.